This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We have got a lot of desperate teams in the NBA and the NHL right now on the brink of elimination. The Celtics actually rose to the occasion last night, staying alive in the Eastern Conference Finals. But we got a couple series where we could see some sweeps in the NHL as well. We're going to break down game number four between the Hurricanes and Panthers for today. Also talk about the Knights and um, the Stars. We'll talk some Heat Celtics and talk about all these conference finals with Tom Vecchio right now. Getting his read in the futures market and some individual games as well. Welcome on into covering the spread that's right here on the FanDuel podcast network and numberfire.com my name is jim sonis i am a senior writer and analyst for numberfire joined here as mentioned by tom vecchio you can find him on twitter at dfs underscore tom and tom desperation looks good on the celtics as last night was uh a different kind of team it looked like how you doing today i'm doing good yeah it's it's glad to, i'm glad to be here you know back as a guest on the show not hosting yeah. anymore um yeah. The Celtics, yeah, they look good. I mean, that was the best game that they played in like a week and a half since closing out the series versus the 76ers. Obviously, they need to continue that if we want to see the series extended. Uh, there's a lot to get to for these three games. And the betting markets reacted pretty significantly to that win last night for the Celtics. We'll talk about uh, the series prices for that one. We'll also talk some NHL. We'll talk about tonight, uh, game number four between the Hurricanes and Panthers. Check in on the Knights and Stars and see if the Knights can finish off that sweep tomorrow. Break down all that here with Tom in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts or break down the Charles Schwab Challenge with Brandon Gadula went up last night. You can find that over on the Covering the Spread podcast feed and over on the FanDuel YouTube page make sure to subscribe there if you like what you hear on youtube leave us a thumbs up and if you like what you hear leave us a five star rating over on apple podcasts make a fast break to FanDuel during the nba playoffs because right now new customers get a no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars that's one thousand dollars back in bonus bets if your win bet doesn't win there's no better place to bet all the playoff action than America's number one sports book, FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only. $10 deposit required. Refund issued is non withdrawable. Bonus bets that expire in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See full terms at fanduel.com slash sportsbook. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 533-42. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700 or in Kansas, ksgamblinghelp.com. Louisiana is 1-877-770-STOP. In Massachusetts, gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support. In Maryland, mdgamblinghelp.org. And in New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope and y And in West Virginia, go to 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Let's start things off here by talking about game number four between the Hurricanes and the Panthers right now. And the Panthers, Tom, have a shot at the sweep here, but we do see a pretty tight money line. Panthers minus 111, Hurricanes minus 108. The total in this game is five and a half with the under at minus 124, the over at plus 102. So, Tom, uh, we've got a situation here where the Panthers can go for the sweep there at home in this game, but money line's pretty tight. So what are you seeing in this game as far as the traditional markets here? Well, ultimately, I'll be leaning on the under, as I have been for most of this series. Uh, you know, right from the jump, the first thing we should be noting, uh, especially if, if someone out there is interested in the Canes tonight, Canes money line, first thing I'm going to note is whether or not the Panthers' top-line center, Alexander Barkov, a.k.a. Sasha Barkov, whether or not he's going to play. He left their most recent game early, did not return. They said, and they were also winning that game, when he didn't return, they said it was precautionary. They're also, you know, they were on the path to being up 3-0. They didn't have to push him out there, et cetera, et cetera. Barkov, uh, two years ago, won the Selkie Trophy, which is the award for the best defensive center in the league. He is very, very good. So him not being there tonight would give the pain, uh, would give the Canes the best shot for them to win they've had this series. So if Barkov does not play, I will be very interested in the Hurricanes tonight. 
I will still be liking the under and uh, just the way the series has gone. I'm not expecting a whole ton of scoring. So the under is something I am hundred percent in on. And the Canes money line is dependent on whether or not Barkov plays. That Canes money line is minus 108 right now. Uh, the under on five and a half is minus 124. And if, if he can't go, would that make the under even more attractive to you? Or is he someone who influences kind of everything in this game? Well, he's very good at everything he does. I would still have interest in the under regardless. And I, you know, even if he played and even if he didn't get hurt, I would still have interest in the Canes just because they are doing a lot of the little things right. And just to, just to paint a, a picture real quick, to this point in the series, they have, and this is through all situations, which we've talked about, 5v5 situations, power plays, shorthanded, all these things. The Canes are doing a lot of things right. They're just kind of getting unlucky. To this point in the series, they produced 14.57 expected goals they should be scoring, while the Panthers are only at 10.16. So they're, they're outproducing them from a process standpoint, and they're still down 03, which is obviously unlucky when right. it's all said and done. They've also have more shot attempts, 281 to 218 for the Canes uh, over the Panthers. So the Canes are doing literally everything right except scoring. Mm -hmm. So I would still just have interest in the Canes fundamentally, even if Barkov was fully healthy, just because I think they're due for some positive scoring regression. Right. Uh, the Canes money line for this game is minus 108 right now um, for uh, this matchup here against uh, the Florida Panthers. And I think that it, it's interesting to see that number, as you alluded to, despite the fact they're down 3 despite the fact this game is on the road. It, we're still seeing a lot of faith in the Canes. Now their money line shifted to 110 as we're recording here. So clearly some interest here in the Hurricanes for this matchup. Now, asking you about a single game is one thing. We'll get to player props in a second. But do you think they have any shot to actually like claw their way back in the series? Because 3-0 is a big hole. But like you said, they've been playing well. Three competitive games so far. Is that a bridge too far for you? Or is at least a consideration to check out the Canes at 9-1 uh, to one to win the series? Uh, ultimately it's, it's too much. It's too, yeah. too much of a hole to climb out of. Could they get one win? Sure. I would say mm -hmm. definitely get one win, you know, especially in, in conference finals. I, I really don't expect too many teams to get sweeped, uh, to get swept, I should say for, to see too many sweeps. Um, so one win, sure. Maybe two, if they get a lucky bounce, the game goes to overtime. Like we've seen two of these games go to overtime. And like I said, yeah. they've been doing a lot of little things, right? They could have been up 2-0 in the series instead of going to four overtimes and losing. So one win, sure, maybe two, but winning four straight, I do not see happening. Okay, so not quite sold in the 9-1, to but let's go back here to this game. Gainer four here between the Hurricanes and the Panthers, already on the under, a 5.5 and, and minus 122, and potentially on the Canes' money line as well. But what about player props? What are you seeing there for this game? That would be directly to Brent Burns for the Carolina Hurricanes, over 3.5 shots. That's sitting at plus 108. Uh, he is the defender on the top power play for them. He leads them in shots this postseason. Over the last two games, he's only had a single shot in each game. Obviously, that's not what we want, what we want to be seeing. Uh, we also have to add in this desperation factor that they should be looking to get any and all chances to the net, and Brett Burns is usually very good at that. He did have eight shots in the first game of the series. Granted, that game did go to quadruple overtime, so we have to take that with a grain of salt. Eight shots is not the norm for Brett Burns, but looking back at his you know game log in the prior games this postseason, he's routinely getting to five, four, five, six shots. So he's always been that player when he was with the San Jose Sharks for the majority of his career. So they have the desperation factor, and we have a player that's been relatively consistent along with the high ceiling. So Burns at plus money over three and a half shots is a spot that I absolutely love tonight. Get that FanDuel Sports again, the shot prop as a Minnesota Wild fan, and I had no idea. Like, again, this is how little I pay attention to the NHL right now. I because I, I was like I had no idea he was still in the league, uh, but he's 38. I looked it up. I thought he was going to be like 43, but apparently he was super young back when I was watching. Because again, I've been checked out for a pretty long time here. But 38 years old, three and a half shots plus 108. I like it. It's ambitious, and uh, we'll see how that one can go down. Anything else you like in this game for tonight, Tom? Uh, not really. And, you know, yeah. some of the. You know, the Canes have been good on defense. They really. I mean, losing a game one nothing like. Yeah, the Canes didn't. They played a great game. They just didn't score. And and full credit to you know Sergei Bobrovsky and Net for the Panthers. He's been stellar this postseason and and really pushing himself in into the Conn Smythe Trophy. If the Panthers 
you know, do make it that far and do win the Stanley Cup. But the Canes pr- played some pretty good games. They just haven't been able yeah. to score, so they're not winning. It's weird to say a tough luck down 03, but I think that's definitely the case uh, given there have been like 34 overtimes across those three games. Makes sense that they've uh, had a rough go of it so far. Let's talk now about the other uh, conference final in the NHL before we talk about some NBA. Uh, the Vegas Golden Knights got a win last night once again. Now one win away from advancing to the Stanley Cup finals. For game four, their money line is plus 105. The Stars are minus 126. Looking at the uh, the conference finals options here or the uh the com- the conference finals options tom stars are 10 to 1 that sounds like a pretty tough sell if we're not on the panthers or the the hurricanes at uh 9 to 1 given how well they played i feel like the gap here is a bit bigger so anything stand out to you in the series prices or potentially for game 4 in this one for game 4 i would have to go with another under and, you know, I'll be perfectly honest. I, I was on the stars last night. I was also on the under last night and that did hit after three goals in the first six or seven minutes last night. I was very worried about that, but I did take, I did hit the under last night. I'll be on the under again. The stars at this point, I, I think they've run out of gas and mm-hmm. I've been talking a lot about the stars, how they're due for this positive regression and Vegas is, is scoring at an unsustainable rate. And that that's going to fall back down to earth and all these sorts of things. And not Jake Ottinger, the goalie for the stars, he's been underperforming compared to his regular season rate. And he should be also due for positive regression. And I think they've run out of time where, you know, game one, they lose. Okay. It happens over time. Game two, they look better. They still lose it. Last night was a complete nightmare for them going down. Oh, three in the first few minutes of game. Now also losing their captain, Jamie Ben because he got ejected from a game because of, of a horrible cross check, just a, a blatant cross check that he should not be making in that circumstance. Yeah. They've run out of gas at this point. So if I'm not interested in, like you said, in the Canes and 920, the Canes are better than the stars. I have no interest in Dallas. And again, maybe Dallas comes away with this victory, but they will not close out this series. Was the, gas factor bad enough where you consider the Knights money line at plus 105 or is that properly accounting for what we saw in uh last night's game yeah that I think that that's spot on I yeah. you know if it got to plus if something changed dramatically and it got to plus 120 or so which sure. is not a massive movement but it's still moving enough that that's the spot I would have interest in Vegas just plays such a solid game top to bottom and they do such a good job of insulating Aiden Hill, their goalie, who's realistically their third string or should have been their third string goalie, that they don't have to do a whole lot on offense to put themselves in a spot to win where they're just so solid on defense. So the stars, I had faith in them. I, you know, I, I do have a bet on this ge- this series to go six games and mm. it's probably not looking too good right now. Well, we couldn't sell you on a, uh, on a Hurricanes future. We could not sell you on a Stars future. Let's shift focus now and talk some NBA because last night, like I said, the Celtics were able to keep that series alive as they did take down the Miami Heat. Looking forward to gainer five in this series. The Celtics are now eight-point favorites. Total in this game is 215.5. And, and let's start things off with the series prices, Tom, because it is interesting to see the Celtics at plus 230 off of a one victory, but it's kind of like, if this were 3-1 and they had won game one, what would the series price be? Probably pretty similar. You know, it's not about momentum. It's about, like, the situation, the state of the series. Is there any value for you in the Celtics at plus 230? Any value in the Heat at minus 280, potentially? What's your read on the series prices first? Then we'll talk about the game, uh, game number five. The series prices, I think, are pretty spot on. Mm-hmm. Um, I have no interest in either of them. We, you know, we talked about a few things pre-show about how you would approach this betting market. Could you just do a, a rolling money line parlay of the Celtics. And I think that would be the answer to do. Mm -hmm. If you truly think the Celtics can come back and win, the answer is probably a rolling money line bet rather than taking them at plus 230, which I do not think is long enough. Um, I'll be 100% honest. I have the Heat at 18 to 1 to win the NBA championship. So I do not want to see the Celtics come back and win. Um, Yeah, I think these lines are pretty spot on. You know, if you wanted to say that, okay, maybe the Celtics can – grab a game or two, but they're not going to win the series. You could look at the series spread, which I think is relatively interesting. You can get the the Celtics, uh, what is it, plus one and a half games at what is it, plus 148 there. Yeah. That's relatively interesting. Um, You know, again, I think there's just, there's a better way to go about it. And it's probably just via the money lines in some capacity. 
Yeah. So what you're talking about there is you bet the the Celtics money line tonight at minus if you like the Celtics again, caveat that, you know, you have to do the read of that first. If you like the Celtics money line, take that tonight at minus 310, take the payout from that and put it on their money line the next game, a rolling uh rolling money line parlay you could consider that and you would likely get a better price than the plus 230 unless something like if there were a jimmy butler injury or something like that maybe uh the plus 230 would be valuable but like you know we've seen that already but i don't think that's a uh, high enough odds to account for it that much within the handicap here now you mentioned the the heat 18 to 1 uh when did you get that and what pushed you towards betting the heat at that number i got that uh, after the, what was it, game, after uh, game two of the Knicks series when Jimmy didn't play and they lost. Yeah. Um, and the series was going back home tied 1-1 and, you know, Jimmy was going to play game three. That's when I got it. And I don't know, it just seemed like they were in a spot where I think, you know, the Knicks were a, a good team and I think they were great. And just objectively where that value lied uh, in that series with them, at the time, given the fact that the 76ers were, were leading the East or right. leading the, that series versus the Celtics, they were their odds were way too short. I want to just take a very long shot on, on the Heat. Okay, so we're rooting for Tom's 18-1 to ticket on the Heat, rooting for that Stars uh, night series in game uh, six games as well. We'll see if we can get that one. But let's talk here about game five between the Celtics and the Heat. Again, the spread is eight in favor of the Celtics. Total 215 and a half down a tick from where it was last night. Anything stand out to you for game five specifically, Tom? Yeah, I think my overall takeaway from this game is that the Celtics win. Okay. They do not cover, and okay. we see the under hit. Okay. So that's the route that I'm going. I think Miami will close this out in six games. They will close it out at home. So the under, the Celtics to win, but they do not cover. And I think that we're going to see either this game or or if it goes to game six, we're going to see a game end like 98 to 92. It's going to be an ugly old school Eastern Conference playoff game where we're not just, you know, 94 to 89 type of game. It's going to be really, really low scoring. Would you consider pairing the spread and the total together? Because those two bets actually do correlate pretty well uh, because it's harder to cover a large spread if there are, if there are fewer points in the game. Right. Would you consider pairing them together? The price in that would be plus 271 at FanDuel Sportsbook. They have to be good independent bets, and I want there to be some kind of correlation. This actually does check both those boxes. FanDuel is aware of that because it's plus 271 instead of a little bit longer. Um, would you consider pairing them together or no? I, I would. I don't mind that. Plus 271, I think, is... It's pretty spot on for where it should be. I, I don't think you'll find it any any longer uh, out there. Like, like you said, there, it's obviously being accounted for for the right what, the what it could be. Yeah, yeah, for the correlation. But yeah, I certainly do like that. You know, last night the Celtics. You know, I want to say obviously played their best game of the series. They were shooting. They were just dreadful from downtown in the first few games of the series, and they shot forty percent last night, which is obviously great. And forty percent is, is still just a touch too high, in my opinion, for the playoffs, especially with how good the Heat are. So they're not going to be as bad as they were in the first few games. I don't think they're going to be shooting forty percent as they were last night. So if we do see that, you know, forty percent drop a little bit from downtown to somewhere in the mid to low thirties. That should decrease their scoring. I think that's what will prevent them from covering, but they're still doing so many things right, at least as they showed last night. It'll put them in a spot to win. Okay. Well, I like it. Maybe we can get a competitive series out of this still. If we get that uh, Celtics money line to come through, minus 310. The spread plus eight for the Heat is minus 110, and the under 215 and a half is minus 110 as well. Should be a fun couple nights of desperation across both the NBA and the NHL. That is Tom Vecchio. Make sure you check him out on Twitter at DFS underscore Tom. Find his work over at Number Fire as well. Tom, thank you for filling in for me while I was gone uh, last week. I appreciate that as always. Good luck to you with that Stars Nights bet and the Heat future we'll talk to you again soon uh, probably before the nba finals to uh get your read on that once things are all set there absolutely i'll be glad to join then all righty thank you tom and check out tom again on twitter at dfs underscore tom i am on twitter at jim sonis you can also follow the fanduel podcast network at fanduel podcast tomorrow we are back here to preview the indy 500 the coke 600 and the monaco grand prix same place same time all right here with dr nick giffen of the action network we'll be up tomorrow afternoon over on the fanduel youtube page and on the covering the spread podcast feed. we'll talk to all of you then good luck with your bets until then this has been covering the spread right here on the fanduel podcast network Podcast Network.